Have you ever wondered why we sometimes make decisions that we later regret? Could it be that we're being subtly influenced or manipulated without even realizing it? Today we're delving into the fascinating world of manipulation and influence. Firstly, understand that manipulation isn't inherently evil. It's a tool, and like all tools, its ethical implications depend on how it's used. Let's explore some common manipulation tactics and how they work. The first tactic is scarcity. People are wired to want things that are limited or hard to get. It's why marketers use phrases like limited offer or while stocks last. By creating a sense of scarcity, they trigger a sense of urgency, prompting us to act quickly. Next is liking. We're more likely to do things for people we like. This is why salespeople often try to establish a rapport with you. They know that the more you like them, the more likely you are to buy from them. Then there's commitment and consistency. Once we commit to something, we prefer to stay consistent with it. So getting someone to agree to a small request often paves the way for larger requests later. The authority tactic is another powerful one. We're more likely to follow instructions from someone we perceive as an authority. This is why titles, uniforms, and symbols of status matter. Moving on to more aggressive tactics. Charm involves using flattery or a flirtatious approach to make others feel special. Coercion, on the other hand, involves threats or fear. Silent treatment uses silence to create anxiety and pressure, while reason uses logical arguments to persuade. Regression involves acting childishly to gain sympathy or make the other person uncomfortable. Self-abasement is about humbling oneself or using self-deprecating behavior to elicit a favorable response. Responsibility invocation reminds someone of their commitments or obligations, making it harder for them to refuse. Hardball takes coercion to the extreme, inflicting harm or injury to force compliance. Pleasure induction makes the requested action seem enjoyable and harmless, while social comparison uses others as benchmarks to convince someone to act. Monetary reward offers money to persuade someone to commit acts they wouldn't normally do. It's essential to recognize these tactics when they're being used on you. But remember, these tactics can also be used ethically. For instance, the contrast principle can make a reasonable request seem even more appealing after a larger one has been declined. Reciprocation taps into our desire to return favors. Concession starts with a larger request and then scales down and social proof leverages our tendency to trust products or ideas endorsed by others. In conclusion, understanding these tactics of manipulation and influence can give you more control over your decisions and relationships. It can help you resist manipulation and make better, more informed choices. But remember, with great knowledge comes great responsibility. Use these tools ethically for positive influence and mutual benefits.